When I started teaching over 40 years ago, we were more concerned about students sitting quietly in straight rows and doing as the teacher said. And teachers would sit and listen to lectures and they would do worksheets or they would read a paragraph out of a textbook and then answer some questions. That isn't very efficient in this world that we live in today. Our students have to be actively engaged now using technology to do research, perhaps communicating with students through the internet who live in another country. Uh, education has changed dramatically. We've got to have students who don't just use one resource to find information, but have really learned now how to use multiple sources of information. They have to be critical thinkers because there's so much information coming at them that they have to be able to decide, is this information valid? Is this information relevant? Uh, is this information useful? Can I trust this information? Because they're getting many diverse perspectives or opinions on things that are happening uh, in different subject areas or even in the news that they hear. We've got to develop that ability to think critically and also to think creatively to solve problems. How does the classroom look different today? We don't want to see students sitting and looking at the back of another student's head. We want to see students sitting together and discussing and using language and working in groups. We want to see them engaged with a very significant issue or problem that they can bring their own thinking to or collaborate around to solve that particular problem. We want to see students who have rich learning environments with not just one textbook to read, but multiple sources to read to gain information. And then most importantly, we want to see that students are learning how to use their mind well. So instead of a teacher standing in the front of the class just lecturing to students and students sitting passively receiving that information, we want students to hear what a teacher has to say and then work with the problem or with an issue or with a discussion around what that teacher has been sharing. We want students sitting more in groups than we do want them sitting and looking at the back of another student's head. I know that all of you who have been to school may think that education was better in those days because you felt students learned more, but actually what they learned was perhaps facts, but I don't think that they necessarily learned how to be a better thinker because I've been at this business for over 40 years, and believe me, I see students who are using their minds now much more uh, than I saw them when I first started teaching. I see students writing with much greater proficiency now than when I was even writing essays myself as a sixth grader. I've watched my children and my grandchildren continually progress in their learning. It doesn't mean that we don't have things that we still have to do in education. Of course we do. We have to help our students become even more proficient, but we have to change our paradigm in the classroom. It's no longer just how much can I cover factually. It's how can I teach students to use important facts to solve problems or to think with them or to apply them in different contexts. The concepts of a discipline or the, uh, the conceptual understandings of the discipline now make the work of a teacher more complex than it was in the old days when all I had to do was teach some facts. So as a parent or as a community member, you may hear teachers talking about concepts or conceptual understandings, and that's valuable because that shows you that the teacher understands that their job is not just to cover information at a low level, but to help students build patterns and connections in their mind so that when they see the concept of symmetry, they can find examples of symmetry no matter uh, what context it's in. They recognize these concepts and they start to build a patterning and sorting mechanism so that they don't learn about a system and that's in one context but they understand and recognize systems whether they're environmental systems or economic systems or even social systems. So we start to think in bigger frames but facts are very important as the tool for helping students gain that deeper understanding.